So welcome to this week's block roll highlights from Meeting C++. Um, I chose, well, guess which blog post I chose. Well, there's a bunch of interesting posts this week, actually. There is from, from C++ Stories and Modern C++, the usual weekly post. Uh, there is a, a Zoomed post from Lee Myers. Um, C Lion and Qt have like a critical bug fix or like you know the security advisory. And that in the case of Qt, uh, Qt block has been active again with a new release. And also they started a, a series on WebAssembly and Qt. That's all very nice things. And then there's a, a couple of posts from the old new thing about doing things with coroutines and C++ and WinRT. Um, there's even a post about interviews. Uh, and if you interface you know, them, don't, don't feel bad about that. That's normal process of us on our careers. And then there's four posts from the Visual C++ team blog. Uh, the last one is about CppCon. Also, the CppCon posts about Bianca's keynote is in there. But um, you probably already guessed it. I want to talk about the post in integrating C++ header units into Office using MSVC. Um, and this is also the beginning of a series. So we basically have now some series um, ongoing. Um, you see the old new thing has a series with part one and part two. Uh, Cute product uh, has started one. And here we see that the integration header units thingy from Microsoft. This has spawned uh, a bit of you know questions about this, like what, what office do they mean? Um, do they bring that to their office or do they mean the Microsoft office or which Microsoft office do they mean, et cetera, but that's all okay. Um, the other thing is that I guess not everyone knows the term C++ header units, right? The C++ 20 feature, and if you not have dug deep into modules and, you know, featured around that, you, you might have heard it, but it's it's not like something where everyone like in C++ goes, oh yeah, clear, that's, that, that's, that's totally. And so this post talks about integrating this feature, which is kind of, you know, in, in the module world living into their code base for Office and uh, compiling three of their DLLs with it as a first pilot. Uh, it's a really interesting post. And um, so let's first dig a bit into header units. Header units, and they link to the Microsoft documentation here, of course, um, they are kind of a, a bit an improved pre-compiled header file, OK? They're not a pre-compiled header file. Um, but they are similar. Um, so it's it's not like the same thing. It's a binary representation of a header, um, but it's more like meant to be used either as, as that. Was, so you, you don't need to like go the next step to modules. Um, so it's what I take from this, from this blog post is that header units, at least in Visual Studio, are usable on their own and can bring you compilation advantages and also are a step stone to modules, OK? So you, you will have to probably deal with this when you go to modules. Um, and you are available, you're, you're able to basically have this roll out on its own. You don't have to like fully implement modules. This is like a first step to have an improvement that comes from modules into your code base without using modules directly. Um, I also included Reiner Grimm's post on this. He has posted in last year, like almost exactly a year ago, about this in the beginning of September, uh, where he covers a bit of other things. This is just a part where he talks about header units. And um, again, you see here, he's clearly stating it's not pre-compiled headers, but um, it's something different from the module world, but kind of, you know, if, if you currently use pre-compiled headers, it could uh, partially or completely maybe replace those. It's like if you if you use that heavily, that feature, uh, that's probably something worth looking into if that's like when you go to C++ 20, that's like one of the first things you want to touch to uh, see if that's possible. But one of the differences, what I understand is that like pre-compiled headers are still headers and a header unit is, um, not so much anymore like a header because it's like compiled after the preprocessor. So macros are possible with header units. They work, but they 
only like, you know, um, are present when the header unit is compiled, when, when this code is actually being converted into a header, a header unit by the compiler, right? So the, the next usage of that header unit as, you know, the information from that header will not have the preprocessor pre run on it. So you're not able to have a, a pre-compiled header that like goes two different paths as in like an if def or something, okay? So, and this is one of the examples they show. Another example they show is like, if you have like a, a debug uh, statement, um, you would have to basically have two different uh, header units for that. And I don't know if that like is working. That's something like which you have to go for the black blog, blog post, you know? Um, I think it's a rather interesting topic and it's interesting and also important because, you know, this probably improves compile times for you, but you probably want to measure that on your own. Um, and it's a good first step in the direction of modules for your code base when you go to C++20. So this is definitely a series you should see. Um, I quickly want to mention that while we talk about modules and header units, I did not see the keynote from Daniela Engert, unfortunately, but I will see it at meeting C++ where she will give an updated version of that, which will probably be 100% modules or something like that. She told me something like that, I don't know. Um, but that's also a good talk to watch out for in this case, um, and just want to give that a plug. Um, because Daniela has been busy with implementing her modules and probably also header units for format um, for the format library. And back to those posts. This is just the first post of this. I do not know if like if I, we assume that n is not one, right? Um, so this is something to watch out for that they probably will post an update to how they continue to that. And maybe at the end of the series, they will completely switch to modules. Um, but I find it rather interesting. I find, find it also interesting that they uh, dog food their own implementation to their own code base now and kind of, you know, see how this works. Um, probably helps also mature their implementations for this. So great blog post. And this is what I wanted to highlight for this week. But as I already mentioned, there is more to look at. Uh, the block rule also has some videos. Um, by its nature, also it, the, the block rule itself uh, contains uh, the block rule highlight video from last week. And um, there is a bunch of interesting things if you want to read on various things about C++. Thank you for your attention.